not an ASMR, but oh my god, I realize I am doing an ASMR for the first time. How do you clean your hobby brushes is a question we always ask around or get asked in the hobby community, but I believe there's other questions we should also talk about when it comes to maintaining your hobby hygiene, so to speak. I clean my hobby table every one to two months or whenever I finish a major project in my army. And that's because I believe having a clean, neat, and organized space has a lot to do with your hobby motivation and productivity, which are the topics of this series, Hobby MoPro. Several hobbyists will agree with me when they say that it's easier to pick up a brush or start a project or get back on the hobby horse when you have a clean and neat organized setting right in front of you. And I know that may sound a little bit strange to some of us in this hobby because this is quite a messy hobby. But knowing where your brush and paint and specific color hue of wash is wherever you need it, whenever, is always a nice feeling so you can always zone in and focus on the task at hand. And this is how I've been cleaning up my hobby space as a hobbyist for the last three years. So when I finish a major hobby project and before I start a new one, I always gather up all the tools that I have used in the past month or months. I always make an effort to separate the dry from the wet. And I do that by clearing out my table. I get every single piece of item cleared off the table, including the big organizers, the mat, the towel underneath, because you never know the dust, the grime, and the icky bits that accumulate underneath all those nooks and crannies. And if you let that accumulate, it will eventually affect your miniatures, the environment you'll be breathing in, and the actual paints maybe possibly. And even the table it might even destroy it. But that's one of the first things you'll eventually get to realize why it's good to really do a deep clean, so to speak. So I put all my dry equipment on one side and all my wet equipment like my palettes, jars of water, my paint brushes, all on one side. And you may notice I always keep my brushes, or at least the good brushes, suspended or pointed downwards when they dry or when they're not in use so that the paint or gunk doesn't dry in the feral area. There's a video I made about that a couple of months ago. Oh, and that's a little bonus. I actually did some pre-cleaning before I did this. I had some paint remover called Paint Be Gone, which is a good local all-natural paint remover brand or paint stripper. And whatever was left behind from the paint stripper could be reused. And I reused that to clean up my dirty, gunky brushes. I only use this for brushes that I am not so keen to taking so much care about, like my big base brushes, my dry brushes, the ones that really got so gunky and dirty and stiff, because I know I could apply rougher methods of cleaning for these brushes. So I used paint stripper <laughs> on these brushes to soften them up. And when they were softened up, I vigorously scrubbed them on a towel and I could already see most of the paint getting rubbed off the bristles. If paint remover could remove paint from plastic, why not could it remove it from nylon bristles? Take note, I said nylon, not natural hairs, because I would not apply such a vigorous method of cleaning my brushes for nice paint brushes. It's a good little coffee break. Once you separated the wet from the dry, we could start reassembling the dry tools or the dry bits of my hobby area. This is actually the easy part because all you gotta do is just give it a wipe down. In the Philippines, there's a lot of dust, so you just have to wipe off the dust and maybe vacuum a little bit or just tidy up and organize. So I put back my paint racks, my paint organizers, my tools. And at this point, I can semi reorganize or organize my new hobby area according to what I've learned in the past two months. Because possibly when you've been painting over and over every day and you realize there's a better way to organize your space, this is also the time to do that. And the only thing that's left to do is take care of the wet stuff. The stuff that gets stained like your paint palette, the stuff that has water in it like your cups, and most importantly, yes, 
the brushes. So it's at this point that I took everything to the wash or to the sink or to the bathroom and I got a stool because I knew I'd be there for maybe for a good 15 to 30 minutes depending on how many brushes I'm using. I was pretty much there for an hour because I had to shoot but basically get yourself hunkered down on a nice sink and basically start doing the dishes. Shame on you if you don't know how to do the dishes. Now's your time to learn how to do the dishes because basically you'll be treating some of your wet materials like dirty dishes. So what I like to do is I like to put everything on the sink and one by one, I just water and soap each item. I unload all the water. Visual warning, the next few images are quite a little bit disgusting. So if you're not comfortable with looking at someone else's dirty paint water, look away for the next few seconds. Dump out all the dirty water and then you leave all your dirty dishes on the sink and each time you clean something you're basically like having the rest of the water trickle down on the other dishes. It's at this point that I separated the terrible brushes from the nicer brushes because the terrible brushes I can be very quick and dirty with them. I don't have to be as careful because they are already not as pointy but I still want to maintain or prolong the life of a bad brush because a bad brush becomes a base brush, which becomes a dry brush, which becomes a mixing brush. The life cycles of a brush, that could be a good video. The stingy person in me will always try to squeeze the most value I can out of like a five peso paintbrush. And all you need here basically to clean up these messy brushes is a lot of elbow grease, a bar of soap, and some time. And basically what you wanna do here is you want to rinse your messy brush and your bar of soap. You wanna act as if you're picking up paint from the bar of soap, as if the bar of soap was a bar of paint. And you can do it as vigorously as you like, depending on how patient you are. Obviously here, I have a lot of paint brushes to go through. And what the soap does is that it doesn't just clean out the gunk in between the bristles, but it actually softens the bristles because you know, that's what most soaps do. I am actually using just like a regular hand soap here because most of my hands will actually get soapy. So eventually it's nice to use a soap that's not harsh on your hand. So when you soften, you get that nice lather, you bring it under the sink and then you rinse and you'll get to feel the difference of your brush getting softer and softer as you rinse. And when you still see some gunk, go back, pick up some soap, lather rinse repeat do this until you feel like you're happy with how clean the brush is and i know it might look like the brush is a bit beat up and this is where you start to shape the brush you basically just shape the brush using the soap as if you were getting a point on the brush on your wet palette using paint so basically you're replacing the wet palette with paint with soap and you're sharpening those bristles with some lathery soap you want to get like soap suds that are not infected or <laughs> that are not covered in paint and what happens here is that you want to actually leave that soap as like a layer on your newly shaped slash sharpened brush because when that lather hardens it hardens hard, hardens hard. and it helps retain or reform the original shape of your brush it will not bring it to like original quality or store-bought quality but it will prolong the shape of the lifespan of your terrible brush if you ask me it's worth the effort because if you paint as much as i do i could really mess up a brush in a couple of weeks time i make it a good point to try to revive these brushes now for the dry brushes the technique is quite similar but the only difference is you do not shape the dry brush because you want to leave your dry brush dry <laughs> with what we're doing previously with our shitty brushes or terrible brushes we're having some soap left on top of it to harden so if you want to use that brush again the next time you want you need, you need to get that brush wet so that the soap falls off and lathers off and you don't want to do that process with a dry brush because you just want to have a dry brush when you paint again so when it comes to the dry brush just lather rinse lather rinse repeat do not shape now this is the exciting part which is our nice brushes are nice natural hair brushes this is not an asmr but oh my 
God, I realize I am doing an ASMR for the first time and I'm contemplating if I should do all of this in ASMR. And of course, I don't know what this actually sounds to you guys, but I'm actually <laughs> enjoying it. And I'm seriously contemplating doing this for the rest of the video. <laughs> okay, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do that for another video. I don't know. L let me know if you like ASMR, man. <laughs> But this is the brush brand that I use, Master's Brush Cleaner. And basically, we want to take that rough, elbow greasy method that we did with the terrible brushes and be gentle with these brushes using Master's Brush Cleaner. I'll try to put links below on where to buy the stuff I used. And basically, you can do a Google search. A lot of people have talked about Master's Brush Cleaners and a lot of people have different ways on how to use this. For my case, I always pull the brush because this is a delicate brush these are expensive brushes i want the brushes to retain the tip and any rough vigorous action on these brushes will really ruin these expensive nice brushes so to maintain the tip we want to clean out the gunk in between the bristles and when we clean out the gunk in between the bristles we want to retain that shape and to do that when you are lathering on the soap or the master's brush cleaner soap on this brush you want to gently brush as if you were painting on that bar of soap and always pull, always pull back. Never push the brush bristles outward, always pull. I realize that when I do this, I'm always blocking like shadow. So weird. Anyway, just be careful with it. Always pull the brush, always shape it as you are lathering and rinsing your brush. And eventually, you can also shape it in the right way. Just don't add too much soap when you're shaping. Shaping or conditioning is what they would call it. But this would just help retain that, you know, sharpness and it will harden. And lastly, I soap and rinse the big hobby man. And you'll see here, it's not actually a big effect. I actually don't like get all of these, these things super clean. But the idea of me just putting this under soap and water is because I know this is just something that's been exposed to the elements for a couple of weeks. And I just want to make sure there's no dust on it. There's no grime on it. And whatever that's not hardened, I can wash it away before it adds to that hardened pile of gunk on my hobby mat. And basically, that's everything. You can now reconstruct your hobby area or reorganize it to how you feel is best to you. Now, your mileage may vary for most of these things. The idea here is that you want to just maintain that hobby space so that you are always coming back with a space that is not overly disgusting overly unorganized it's basically like taking a bath you know we don't have to take a bath every second of our lives but eventually we have to so same thing for your hobby space we also get to take care of our items we get to find pieces that are missing we don't put things on top of each other and forget about them and we always get to realize what we have in stock and that's how we actually save money in the process and in a little bit of a productivity hack as well as to keeping motivated in this hobby, cleaning up your hobby space is actually a good excuse to say that you did some hobbying without hobbying. For that day, I actually didn't do any painting. I actually just cleaned up my hobby space for that day. And that for me was considered my hobby time for the day. So maybe when you don't feel like painting, maybe you feel like cleaning and you can still tell yourself that you are productive. I know I'm laughing when I say that because it sounds funny, but I, I am quite serious that it is, and I genuinely believe it's still a productivity for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Louis Loves Minis, reminding you to hobby every day to keep the sprues.